Hey, this is Brock Ramirez. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at port interrupts. In this video, I want to take a look at a few of the things that you can change when we look at these port interrupts. Uh, specifically, I want to look at the edge sensitivity setting and just kind of see how this, this acts when you have a, uh, a button. And it might actually explain some of the things that are going on in your life <laughs> as we interface with buttons. Um, okay, so the way we have our switch one is it's connected to port four in bit one. And it's a single pull, single throw switch, which means when you press it, it pulls it to a zero. When you release it, it goes to a one when you have the pull-up resistor. So if we want response to take place immediately when you press the button, you do a high to low transition. So that means as soon as you see a zero, as soon as you see a one go to a zero, you raise the flag and you execute your, your interrupt service routine. And that was the example we did last time. And we can actually hold the button down for as long as we want, and then we can release it and nothing happens. And then the next time we press it, it fires again. So what would happen if we change the sensitivity to be low to high? What that would mean is that when we press the button, it doesn't do anything. It's only when you release the button that the interrupt service routine fires. And it's kind of interesting because if you press the button really quick, you won't even notice this. It's only when you hold it and release it that you can actually see this behavior. So let's do it. Let's uh, open up the last project that we had, which is this uh, ASM IRQ port four underscore S1. And this was the one that basically just, uh, we have high to low sensitivity using this setting right now. And what I wanna do is I wanna change this. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna change this. Let me comment this out. And then I'm gonna now put bit clear in here. And again, this is the default, so we didn't, don't actually have to, to do this, but it's good practice to kind of list this out. Sensitivity, sensitivity is low to high. And that's all I'm gonna change. I'm just gonna change that one setting and I'm gonna fire this up and take a look at what happens. Okay, so I start a new session, it downloads to the board and boom. Okay, so I got my board plugged in, everything's good. Let's go ahead and run this, make sure there's no breakpoints anywhere, and there's not, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And I go out here, and I'm gonna do, the, I'm gonna press the button, let go, and look at it, it toggles it, toggles it. Life is good. It doesn't even know, you don't even really notice what's going on. But what, look at what happens though, if I press and hold this, nothing happens. It's only when I release it that the, the LED actually changes. And you'll notice that, some of the buttons in your life, you can tell that they have this sense, this type of sensitivity setup because if you're pressing them normally, everything's fine. But then it's only like if you hold them down, they don't do anything. And then all of a sudden you release it and it actually will take action. So that's what's happening is that the sensitivity is just a little bit different. So I just wanted to show that behavior. Another thing that I want to show you, which is this is, there's a, a lot of common things that happen that screw you up when you do interrupt service routines. Uh, Probably the first and foremost is forgetting to initialize the vector table. So what happens is that when the interrupt fires, it just jumps into who knows where. Okay, so you always got to remember to do that. The other thing that happens when you do interrupt service routines is you forget to have some key setting when you in initialize them and set them up. So for the ports, they're pretty easy. But when we get into more complicated peripherals, you'll see that it's like there's a lot of bits we need to set up. And so that's another common thing that might happen. Uh, and then the third common thing, with the, which I'll show you now, is what happens when I forget to clear the flag? So let's go down here and let's do an interrupt service routine where I don't clear the flag, okay? And I'll come back up here and let's change our sensitivity back to our normal, uh, our normal high to low. So I took out the code in my interrupt service routine that clears the flag. And I wanna see what happens. The first time that we run this, the flag is cleared, okay? And when we press it, when we press that button, what's gonna happen, I'm gonna go ahead and run, when we press that button, the flag is going to be asserted and it will toggle the LED. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna press it and it worked. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it again and it's stuck. And it's like, what is going on? What is going on here? Well, here's what's happening. You, that flag is always set and, and it never gets cleared. 
So then what happens is that as soon as you get back into this main program, it's going to go right back into the interrupt service routine because it sees it. And now you say, well, geez, that is, how would I ever know that is happening? Well, so here, check this out. What we're going to do here is I'm going to debug this. I'm going to set a breakpoint. So this is going to reinitialize it and it'll set it to zero. And what I want to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint in the interrupt service routine again, and we'll walk through this as it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint right there. Now I'm going to, I want to look at the, the flags. So I can go up to core registers and I'm actually going to go into the port registers, which are down here and I'm on port four and I want to look at the flag. So I'm going to come down here and I want this guy right here. So I'm going to look at this and I want to put this in binary. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say number format. I'm going to go binary and we are looking at bit position one. So it was set from the last time we ran it. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to actually, I'm just going to step this. So let's step it and we can, we can leave that breakpoint in there. So I'm going to step and we, we do our first two instructions and now I'm doing this I'm doing this and we're setting up the LEDs. Now we set up the direction register, resistor enable, make it a pull up, edge select. And now we turn on the IO system and now watch what happens when I clear the flag here. Boom. I cleared the flag. So that's what I meant to do. And now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go, boom. I enabled it, enable maskables, and now I'm jumping. I'm sitting here in my main. Step, 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 step. Now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna press the button. So I go ahead and press it. And now what happens is the next time that I step, I go into main or service routine because the flag was set. Now you don't see the flag get updated instantaneously because of the way the debugger works. It only gets updated when you actually hit the next step. So now what, watch what happens. I'm gonna step. And it toggles the LED, which I just see there, and then I return to the main program, except that I immediately come back into the interrupt service routine. So it didn't, it went back to the main program. It didn't even go to do the, the fetch because it immediately saw the flag was set. So it came back into the interrupt service routine. And I can never get out of this interrupt service routine because that flag is always set. Okay. <laughs> so that is that is like super common to do, and it will screw you up. So I just wanted to show that to you. <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, some common pitfalls there. Remember, initialize the vector table. Remember, configure the peripheral completely. And remember to clear that flag in the interrupt service routine. That is it. As always, remember, support my channel by subscribing and see it.